in the extension one course we started to work with multiple routes so we want to continue taking that a little bit further and like solve some other other problems and we really didn't prove anything about multiple routes in the in the extension one course but what we want to be able to do is prove that if we have a situation where we've got a multiple root for a polynomial x minus a to the power of n so there's one factor and it's multiplied by some polynomial some other polynomial we don't really care what but what we want to do is prove that it has a po the derivative has a polynomial of multiplicity r minus one so we want to be able to do that so and a is a root of has a multiplicity n so is a root of multiplicity n so we can see well that would be a, that would give us our root there and it's power of n so its derivative would have m minus one well that was probably pretty obvious but how do we prove that well what we've got to do and that's what we want to prove from the syllabus notes so what we're going to do is start with our polynomial so x minus a to the power of r times qx so it's got a root of this is a root of multiplicity r because that's the, because that's the power there so and we know we can do this as such such that qx is not equal to zero because that would make the whole thing zero so that would make it a little bit weird and make it zero so what we want to do is differentiate with respect to x so if we're going to do that we've got two uh fact two factors in x multiplying so we would perform the chain rule i'm uh, sorry product rule and then we'd also do the chain rule on this one so we bring r down x minus a to the power of r minus one so that would be the derivative because it's then in times x which is one we multiply it by the second uh, function which is qx plus x minus a to the power of r and times the derivative of qx so we don't know what the derivative is but it'll be some derivative of qx we're not really caring what it would be so from this so we look at what we've got as a common factor x minus a to the power of r minus one and x minus a to the power of r have are common in that they have x minus a to the power of r minus one as a common factor so we factorize that out so you can see that that's factorized out Oh, and we're left with r times qx and this would leave us x minus a to the power of one because we one plus the minus one there would give us r times the derivative of qx so that means that's multiplying by that so it means that must be a factor of the derivative of px so a minus r to the power of r minus one is a factor of the derivative of px so the derivative of px would have a root of multiplicity r minus one which is what we wanted to prove so it's not really too hard a proof okay so try and you've got to remember that proof so and how we would work it out again just by the product rule and the chain rule on x minus a to the power of r so when we're looking at this situation well we hopefully we're clear that if we see x minus two to the power of three x minus four is equal to zero then we want to restart that later sorry about that we get true the, the twos being three of the roots of this polynomial which has four roots there so the other root would be that we would call it a triple root so let's have a look at some problems we've given a polynomial x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed plus 2x minus 1 and it has a multiple zero we're not told what the multiple zero is so if we're going to find this zero and determine its multiplicity well let's have a look if we keep going down to px uh, derivative of px which would be 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 2. Then let's go down to the second derivative, which would be 12x squared minus 12x. Now we get to this point here. We know x can't be a root of multiplicity of this one because we've got a minus 1 there. So x, x equals 0 can't be a root of multiplicity. So when we get to this point, we know it's the only chance we've got here it would be 1 or something from the first derivative. So if we have a look at that we ignore x to the power of zero so we then go and put one into the derivative for p so and that works out to be zero which if it's going to be a root of multiplicity it would be a root of this function it would be a root of this function and if it's a root triple root it would be a, a root of this function as well so we worked with this one first we tested one it's looking nice for the derivative of in the derivative and then we put into p the function itself we get zero which means it's going to be a triple root because it we can get down and we're still deriving at the second derivative and having that same 
value as a root of the second derivative, it would mean that it would be a root of multiplicity uh, 3. So in that case, we've, any, we've got the situation where it's so a root of multiplicity 3 would be x minus 1 to the power of 3. And then we'd have to be able to work out, well, what would be the other one? And then if that's minus 1, that would have to be plus 1. So and that, that should work out as our, our roots there. Using the idea that Px is a double root to find the roots of this function. So again, if it's a double root, then the function itself and the first derivative has a root that is the same. So remember, it's the idea that when we derive it, we have a root that's also a turning point. So turning points exist when the first derivative is equal to zero, and it's also going to turn on the axis. So we get the first derivative being equal to zero, what values that the same would be for the, the function itself. So again, if we derive it and factorize it, we get a 3x out the front. Now, from this one, x equals 0 could not be a root of this because we've got a constant. If we don't have a constant, then x equals 0 could be a, 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 a root of this one. But because it's minus 4, I'm going to ignore 3x. So it really leaves me just x, x plus 2 being equal to 0 or x minus 2 should give us the root if it's going to have a double root. So we sub it into the function itself to confirm that we get is equal to zero, so it must, it, it's got a, it's a derivative, a def, it's a root of the first derivative and of the, the function, so it means it's a double root. So that's what we've got to look for to do if it's a double root. If we go to the, tri, if we were told it's a triple root, we go to the second derivative to play with that. So as we have here. So we're told this function's a triple root. Let's find all the roots. Now again, reminder what a triple root would look like. We said our double root turns on the axis. Then a triple root means that the first, the function itself is equal to zero at the same point that we've got a, a stationary point. So the gradient would be zero, as well as the second derivative is equal to zero, which means it must be a point, horizontal point of inflection. Because the point of inflection is, function is equal, the second derivative is equal to zero. It's stationary, which means it's a horizontal point of inflection, and it's going to be on the, on the axis, x-axis, which means it's a root. So... We derive it once, we derive it twice, and then we get to this point where we got two values, one and three, which are the possible roots that would do that because they're both going to give me station, uh, horizontal uh, points of inflection. So we check x is equal to one, and we put it in the first derivative, and we see that we it gets doesn't equal zero. So it can't be a multiple root there because it's a, it's a root of the second derivative, but not the first derivative. So we, we leave that one there and go to check x is equal to 3. So the derivative of x is equal to 3 gives us 0. The function of x is equal to 3, when x is equal to 3, gives us 0. So 3 is a root of multiplicity 3 because the second derivative has satisfies, as well as the second first derivative and the function itself. So that's what it would start to look like. x minus 3 all cubed. The minus 3 all cubed is minus 27, so the other bracket's going to be x plus 1. So the other root must be minus 1. One root is 3, the other one would be minus 1. So again, given the function there has a repeated root, find all the roots. So we get the first derivative there, set it equal to 0, uh, and then we've checked the values there. So the derivative of X, um, one when we put one third back in, the function itself doesn't equal zero, but minus three is equal to zero. So we get it's going to be a root of multiplicity two, which is going to give you x minus three all squared times x minus one. And we can check it because we know that's going to give us that one. So the minus nine times one gives us plus nine times minus one gives us minus nine. So there's we got a root of multiplicity two, and there's our other root of one. So if we've got this situation as a double root, prove that it must be minus 3q on 2p. So a little bit of a hard function here. So we'd take our derivative. And so if that's the case, we get our derivative being 3x squared plus p is equal to 0. Now, if that's going to be a double root, well, we need to find the values of x there. So we need to manipulate this. So if that's equal to 0, because it's a double root, it has a double root, x squared would equal minus p on 3. Now, p of x would then would be, if we manipulate this, x outside of x squared plus p plus q. 
So I can get the x squared in, minus p on q. So we're using that. I'm putting on 3, sorry. And then we can start to manipulate because we've just got a value for x, and that's what we must be. We want to prove that that root, the value of x, is equal to that. So we get 2 thirds of p, because 1 is 1 third plus 1 is, minus, is positive 2 thirds. And then we subtract our q. We divide by 2 thirds of p, which would give us minus 3q on 2p, which is what we wanted to find there. Have a look at that manipulation. It's a nice, cute little manipulation there, but not easy. Because we've, we've got our value for x squared and then substitute it back in. We need to be able to manipulate that part there. In question 6, we're told that the function here is divisible by x minus 1 all squared. So find the values of a and b. Well, because it's divisible by x minus 1, it means it's got a double root at 1. So the first, we put the function in for 1. And that should equal 0. And that comes out to be nicely a plus b is equal to 0. Put the derivative in as well. So the b is going to cancel. And we're just going to get that. So the derivative of 1 would be equal to 0 as well. So we're able to do our, ex uh, do our numbers out. And we get uh, minus 1 plus a is equal to 0. So a would equal 1. If a is equal to 1, because a plus b is equal to 0, b must equal minus 1. So we've just used what we know about a double root to solve uh, a problem in that regard. So keep in mind what double roots are, what triple roots are, what they look like on graphs, and how to be able to uh, find or show that if a function has a root of uh, a, a multiplicity of r, then its derivative is, has a multiplicity of r minus 1.